Okay, t- today is the start of a new series, which is the seven last words of Jesus, and I will be speaking for the first last word, and Pastor Joe will be speaking for uh, on the second last word. So our word for today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verse 34, which says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. You may now be seated. So since I only have 20 minutes, let's do this quick. (laughs) Uh, Why was Jesus crucified? So this is the setting here. Jesus was already on the cross. The question is, why was he crucified? We see it in John 10, 33. It says, we are not stoning you for any good work. They replied, the Jews replied, but for blasphemy. Because you, a mere man, claim to be God. So three verses before Jesus claimed that I, he said, I and the Father are one. And because of that, the Jews reacted so violently and which actually eventually led for his crucifixion. Now what is blasphemy? Blasphemy is evil speaking against God. When you speak evil against God, it's attacking God. It's great disrespect shown to God. And claiming to be God as an, is an insult or an attack to God. So when Jesus claimed to be God, the Jews sees, uh, saw it as an insult against God. I know there are so many of our friends, maybe, uh, who are from different faith, that they say that Jesus never claimed to be God in the Bible. But actually, that's the reason why he was crucified. Because he plainly claimed to be God. He claimed to be God. He claimed to be the Messiah, the most awaited king, the most awaited savior, the most awaited anointed one to save the Jews from sin. Claimed to be the son of God and the religious leaders cannot accept it at this time. Now, what is the punishment for blasphemy? Blasphemy is punishable by death. Even at the start of Jesus' ministry, the religious leaders were jealous of him because he taught with authority and he performed miracles that none of the religious leaders were able to do. And because of these miracles and because of his teachings, his followers grew in number. And as his popularity increases, the religious leaders' animosity or gallet increases as well. Now we can see in Matthew 26 that the elders and the chief priests ultimately plotted to kill Jesus. So they didn't settle with just envy and anger. Eventually they plotted to kill him. They eventually plotted to kill Jesus. They wanted to find a justifiable reason because they couldn't find any. What's the justifiable reason to eliminate this person? To get rid of him. They tried many times by asking difficult questions about tax, about marriage, about divorce, and even about the greatest commandment. But of course, with Jesus' all wisdom, they all failed. Now in our setting, while Jesus is already hanging on the cross, or even before that, at this whole scene of Jesus from Gethsemane all the way to Jesus' death the next day, they finally got a reason to kill him. Finally, they've been chasing, they've been on guard, waiting for Jesus to make a mistake and use that as a reason to kill him, to crucify him. And finally, they found one, and that is blasphemy, now, which is a crime punishable by death. So Jesus was accused, he was judged, and eventually crucified as a blasphemer because what? Because he claimed to be God. Take note, Jesus claimed to be God. When somebody tells you that they've read the Bible and they never saw a verse that Jesus Jesus says he claimed to be God, well, it's all over the place, actually. So they want to make the most of it. The whole situation that they got Jesus already for the reason of blasphemy. So they enjoyed it. They humiliated Jesus as much as they can. And there is no way, there was no way for them to let him go. Finally, we got him with this blasphemy, and we will never let him go. Now, let us go to our only point, which is 
all are guilty. Everyone in that time were guilty, and including now. So while on the cross, what did Jesus say? He was there hanging on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. I hope with just this one statement, we will be able to understand and capture the depth of God's love for us, His mercy, and His grace, that even while Jesus was being physically killed, He was praying for those who were killing Him. So imagine, in His agony, Jesus' concern was the forgiveness of those who were killing Him. Has somebody tried that here? Now, while you are being insulted even or made fun of, you prayed for their forgiveness. Those who mocked him and beat him, he prayed for their forgiveness. His prayer was a demonstration of his unmatched mercy and love even in his enemies. So when he said, Father, forgive them, he was actually talking to the Father. In a sense, it's a prayer to the Father. Father, forgive them for what they're doing. For they do not know what they're doing. And for us somehow to understand deeper itong one sentence na to, let us find out kung sino yung tinutukoy ni Jesus dito as them at what exactly did Jesus mean when he said, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Ano ba exactly yung what they were doing that they didn't know that Jesus was asking forgiveness for? So the them here, the tormentors, so uh, both Jews and Romans, not only the Jews, but Jews and Romans. So there are four groups of people that we can see inside the whole scene, which are uh, the crowd or the people, the rulers, the religious leaders, the Roman soldiers, and there were criminals with him. So let's go straight to the people. See no the crowd of people? No. So there are four groups, so people, and they're all guilty. Let's go to Luke 23, verses 34, 35. It says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Now the people stood watching. So why am I saying that these people are guilty when they were just there watching? They were just watching. But let us go to the parallel account in Matthew 27. In Matthew 27, 39 to 40, it says, those who passed by, same group of people, those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the son of God. So they were insulting him. They were mocking him. They were making fun of him. Imagine the, 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 the sound of people laughing and some were angry, some were making fun of him. So they were hurling insults at him. If we go back a few verses to Luke 23, before Luke mentioned that the people stood watching, let's go back to verses 15 to 23 of Luke 23. It says, Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. So who's, who was saying this? Pilate. But the whole crowd shouted. So the people shouted. So before they, were, they stood watching, this took place. The whole crowd shouted, Away with this man who released Barabbas to us. So Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus... Pilate appealed to them again. To who's them? To the people. Pilate appealed to the people again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. So they're not so good after all. They stood watching, but before they stood watching, before they were there standing just looking at Jesus, they were the ones actually saying, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time he spoke to them, why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no ground for the death penalty. This is Pilate saying. Si Herod walang nakita ng reason to kill Jesus. Pilate is saying the same. But, therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. Yun ang resolve ni Pilate. I will just punish him and let him go. But with loud shouts, they insistently, the crowds, the people, 
insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So they were persistent, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Even though see Herod and Pilate said, no, I don't, I didn't, we didn't find any reason to crucify him but the people. Why? Because they really wanted to kill him even before this time, right? Because they were envious, they were jealous, and they hated him. And perhaps with those loud shouts, the sense any Pilate that there's a riot coming up if I would say no. So what did he do? He washed his hands and that's it. Okay. Do your thing. But remember, a few days before this, this is Friday. A few days before this, let's say four or five days, four days before. Because Palm Sunday, others were saying it's Palm Monday. Remember what took place in that day? We see this in John 12, 13. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, Jesus, shouting what? Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. And this scene is actually the fulfillment of the prophecy in Psalm 118. So these, most of those people for sure were crying, yelling, shouting, crucify him, crucify him, were also there a few days ago saying, Jesus is the king, Hosanna, Jesus is the king. You see how fickle-minded people are, how easily manipulated people are? If you're not rooted in God's word, you'll easily be manipulated. So this is what it's saying, because they didn't know uh, their scriptures. And they were so blind about the prophecy uh, prophesied in the Old Testament being fulfilled right before the eyes in the lives of Jesus. But they didn't know. So for sure, many of these people were shouting Hosanna just a few days ago, wanting to raise Jesus as king. And for sure, some of them were recipients or witnesses of Jesus' miracles. The feeding of the 5,000, Jesus giving sight to the blind, the lame walked, restored the dead to life, turned water into wine, heard about him walking on water, cast out demons, and so many things that Jesus did, miracles. And I'm for sure many of them were there. Many of them witnessed the miracles. Many of them were there in Hosanna, Hosanna. And I'm sure many of them are here saying, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. In spite of what they've witnessed, they wanted him dead. Why? Because of unbelief. When a person is resolved to not believing, he's always blind to the truth. No matter what truth right before their eyes, and uh, their thoughts are already darkened and the hearts are hardened. So miracles were evidences of Jesus being the Messiah. And those miracles were happening right before their eyes and they could not identify them. That those are fulfillment of Messiah. So these people were wretched, wicked, merciless, hostile, ungrateful people. Hence, they are guilty. Agree? Agree. Rulers, next group, the rulers. Luke 23, 35, it says, The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. What is sneered? When you pull up your nose like this in, in, in anger. They sneered their nose. They sneered at him, scoffed mockingly, contemptuously to the religious leaders. In Matthew 26, 59 to 60, it says, The chief priest and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any, though false witnesses came forward. Chief priest and the Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin, 70 members. These are judges, the rulers of Israel, plus the chief priests. All of them, they're united, connive to kill Jesus. And these rulers, you can't just imagine what they're capable of. If you look at Acts 7, you see what they did to Stephen. They were the ones who deceived the crowd, the people, that Jesus was fake. They were the mastermind, the most cruel, I believe, in these four groups. Then let's proceed. Verses 20, 61 to 62, Matthew 26. And he said, This man, this is the witness, the false witness, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? 
So the high priest asked Jesus, have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent, 63 onwards. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. What did Jesus reply? He said, you have said so. It was not a week you have said so. Because after that, he supported it. That indeed, I am the Messiah. Jesus replied, you have said so. Jesus replied, but I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man, referring to himself, sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One, coming on the clouds of heaven. Are you the Messiah? Yes, I am the Messiah. And in fact, you will see me now, sitting at the right hand of God. That's his answer. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. It was plainly, Jesus claimed to be God. Why do we need any more witnesses? At the back of their minds, why do we need false witnesses? It's just right there. No. He claimed to be God. He is worthy of death. No. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face, struck him with their fist, others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? They started hitting him, spitting on him, and mocking him. Who are these people? Chief priests and the members of the Sanhedrin. Those who claim to be the most religious people in Israel. And they started beating Jesus. So they're not innocent after all. They're guilty. Let's move on to the next group, the Roman soldiers. Matthew 27, 26, it says, Then he released Barabbas, Pilate, to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Who flogged Jesus? Or who scourged him? Who whipped him? Or you know, flogging is, is uh, latigo. The Roman soldiers did. What is flogging? It is to beat someone with a whip or stick as punishment. Now, uh, ang customs and Jews, ang flogging, and maximum number of lashes, 40 minus 1, or 39. But these were not Jews, they were Romans. So they didn't care. At ano yung ginamit nila? They used the, the, the yung whip called flagrum. Ang flagrum, may mga strings, at may mga weight. At at the tip of each string, may hook. And every time they whip it to Jesus, the hook would dig into his flesh. Would dig into his flesh, and when pulled intentionally, pulled, skin and flesh came with it. So hindi lang sa likod, even scholars say, na pati yung mukha ni Jesus ay natamaan ng whip na yun with hook. So if you see the Passion of the Christ movie, makikita natin, they tried to be as accurate as possible, but I don't think it's the same scenario. But makikita mo, after ng scourging or flogging, the whole place was bloody. And after that, what happened after the flogging? Let's go to Matthew 27, 27, 31. Then the governor soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff on his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. So they made... They enjoyed the scene. They really mocked Jesus. They're having fun killing him. Hail, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Imagine Jesus without sleep, exhausted, beaten, insulted, made fun of from the evening until now. So, of course, the soldiers are no innocent. They're not innocent. They're killers. They're professional killers. Next, the last group, the criminals. How much time do I have? Two, three minutes? One minute plus five, so six. So, the criminals. The criminals. Luke 23, 32. Two other men, both criminals, so there were two criminals there, were also led out with him to be executed. In Matthew 27, 43 to 44, it says, He trusts God 
Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, while people were mocking at Jesus, in the same way, the rebels, the two of them, or the criminals, the criminals who were crucified with him, also heap insults on him. May kita yung wickedness ng tao, they were also there, hanging on their own crosses. And still, on the verge of their death, they're making fun of Jesus Christ. Instead of praying and asking God to save them, they're making fun of Jesus, who's being crucified as a blasphemer, actually, who's the one true God. In Mark 15, 32, it says, Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe those crucified him, those crucified with him also heap insults on him. So as they were dying, they're mustering, must, must, mustering up their energy, and they use that energy to insult Jesus. So these people, these two criminals were all guilty. So they all crucified him, the four groups of people. They were all into it. They were so hostile to Jesus, and it seemed that they savored, enjoyed every moment of it with satisfaction and laughter and mockery. And they were all wicked, deserving nothing but hell. But what did Jesus do? But Jesus prayed for them, prayed for their forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. What was it that they did not know? They didn't know that they were killing the one true God. They really thought that they were killing someone who is a blasphemer. They really thought that they were doing God a favor by killing Jesus. In reality, they are blaspheming God, committing the most heinous and direct attack on God. And why would they need forgiveness if they did not know what they were doing? If they didn't know what they were doing, why would they need forgiveness? Because they should have known. They should have known. Considering the miracles Jesus performed, confirming and proving His being the Messiah, fulfilling prophecy after prophecy, they should have known that Jesus was the most awaited Messiah. They should have known. Therefore, they are guilty of not knowing what they are doing. But because of unbelief and hatred, their eyes and minds are shut, blinded by the devil. They were all guilty. No one was not and is not guilty, including us. So Jesus' prayer of forgiveness, in one sense, this is a general prayer for all those who would come to faith, then, now, and the future. In another sense, it is a specific prayer, specific for the them at that time, specific specific for them, those who have abused and mocked Jesus, and it is maybe for you or for some of us right now. Jesus seeking divine forgiveness for the world's most wretched sinners, them and us. This is for the world to know that there is no sin against the Son of God so severe that it cannot be forgiven if one will repent. Conclusion. Everyone is guilty of sin. Everyone. Walang excuse. And yet no one is too wicked, too bad for the cross. Because on the cross, Jesus provided forgiveness for all those who would repent and believe in him. He paid the penalty for the sins that we commit in ignorance or not. He alone earned salvation. The salvation is found in no one else. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that only your word is preached. And I pray that your word will reach every heart and change our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.